design high reliability systems, there are a bunch of complicated issues to consider. It turns out that there are all kinds of evil things lurking out there, trying to mess up our electronic devices. We think about temperature ranges, radiation, vibration, shock, moisture, and environmental stuff like that. We also think about more logical things that can go wrong, like bits flipping from firm errors. We build safe state machines, error correcting code for our memories, TMR for our registers, and the list goes on and on. Then right about that time when we're all done designing our perfect bulletproof high reliability system, and we're home and comfy and cozy reading a book, our toddler turns out the lights, and we think, Oh, yeah, we have to make our power reliable, too. <laughs> One of the most basic and often overlooked aspects of high reliability system design is getting reliable power to all of our components. We need the right kind of power at the right places, at the right times, and in the right order. We need to handle power up, power down, and reset cases, among others. It can be really complicated. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is Wendy Lockhart from Microsemi, and we're going to talk about how to handle power management for high reliability systems. And before we get started, I want to remind everyone that you can click that Download Now button below your player. There you can download a zip file that has all sorts of cool stuff in it. An NPM software installation, a user guide, a tutorial, a product brief, and a white paper that discusses more about system management. Well, with all that housekeeping out of the way, let's get started. Thank you so much for joining me today, Wendy. Hi, Amelia. Nice to see you again. Okay, so can you tell me first, what is considered a high availability system? If your business success or your outbound marketing material includes the words always on, five nines availability, or mission critical, and your success is measured in fit rates, you're most likely working in high availability systems. The simplest definition is when it simply has to work. Applications like networking, defense, and communications. So if I'm a designer of high availability systems, what is the question I'm constantly asking myself? How can I design a system that will be available 100% of the time? Or, more realistically, how can I design a system that will be more reliable than any of our competitors? Well, before you get to the fun part of features such as redundancy, scalability, or virtualization at the system level, the most basic starting point is I need power in the system to be reliable. That makes total sense. So what does reliable power mean to one of these designers? Well, reliable power can include lots of things. Uh, power up sequencing, mm -hmm. knowing that all of my devices will sequence correctly based on their individual requirements. Okay. Power down sequencing, so if something happens and one device fails, there can be a controlled or instant shutdown. Okay. Uh, you have a reset control for different parts of the system. Of course, power monitoring, uh, basically monitoring all of the supplies in the system for good health initially and over time. And then trimming and margining to help maintain a level if it starts to drift or for test purposes during board development and manufacturing. You also need flag generation to monitor system status. And then event and data logging to track system behavior and operating parameters along with communications to the outside world so if values reach a certain threshold the system can request maintenance so fundamentally i need to adopt a power supply management method that manages the power reliably and reacts safely under any condition in any electronic circuit failure is inevitable over time mm -hmm. your only option is to plan for failure and pick the solution with the lowest rate of failure you need to know that when something fails, it will be identified and handled safely. So beyond device failure, there can also be external conditions that can affect the circuit. Soft and firm errors can cause logic or data errors in unprotected devices. Design security needs to protect your system from overbuilding and cloning, and you must ensure data security to protect the functionality of the system. All of these are things to consider when looking for a power supply management method that reacts safely under any condition. So we'll come back to those items later. So Wendy, I imagine this has grown increasingly challenging from year to year 
As geometries have changed, there is even a bigger mix of components now on each system board, and ICs have increased in size and complexity. Yes, that's correct. If you look at just the challenge of power supply sequencing, complex ICs can have many different power supplies. For example, the latest Xilinx and Altera devices have up to seven rails. Wow, okay. Some complex ICs also have specific sequencing requirements with the 1.2 volt rail before the 3.3 volt rail, for instance, uh, to power up the core before the IOs. Customers may need to limit the inrush current for a given PCB by spreading out the power up of groups of components, which helps reduce the size of the main power supplies. The complexities only increase as we now have boards that have greater than 20 power supplies. Traditionally, when looking at power management, we were dealing with regulators or analog point of loads. These are relatively simple components internally that require more smarts outside of the device to control and monitor them. Mm. Now with the usage of digital point of loads increasing, we're seeing systems with a mix of analog and digital point of loads on the same board. This complex power management system vastly exceeds the capabilities of the 10 to 12 analog inputs of a standard off-the-shelf power management device. Okay, Wendy, so what's the difference between an analog and a digital point of load from a power management point of view? A simple regulator would have an enable and an adjust or trim pin for the most basic interaction. The analog point of load in some cases adds the P good or power good output to send status back to the power manager. A digital point of load has significantly more I.O. To start with, communication leverages the power management bus or PM bus through an I2C connection which is used for initialization or monitoring. To start with, communication leverages the power management bus or PM bus through an I2C connection, which is used for initialization or monitoring. Okay. The addressing identifies the device to the controller, and then by adjusting the external resistor values, the address of the device on the bus is set. This device has up to 64 possible address combinations, which indicates the number of devices suppliers are planning for um, to be able to support them on a single system. Mm, okay. The SEQ pin can be used to ramp V out or gang multiple supplies together and have them track each other. This is sufficient for a very simple power sequence, but they lack the flexibility or reconfigurability needed for complex power sequencing. If we look at how these all fit together in a communication system, they may be using an ISPP pack or ADM 1066 power supply management device, along with a CPLD for IO expansion, and a processor to communicate to the backplane through the I2C MUX for the PM bus. All right, Wendy, this is starting to sound really complicated. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, but there's an easier way to do all this. Microsemi offers what we call the Mixed Signal Power Manager, or MPM. MPM can absorb all the functions of the previous devices and provide a scalable single chip implementation for complex power supply management. MPM is a highly configurable solution that can simultaneously sequence, monitor, and margin up to 64 analog and digital power supplies in a single device. So to break that down, it supports a mix of analog and digital point of loads. It can manage up to 64 channels. It supports both open and closed loop margining and trimming for analog supplies and you can define signals for off-chip status and alarm flags. And all of the setup and sequencing is done with a simple graphical interface, uh, no need for scripting languages or code generation. Fantastic. Okay, let me show you what that looks like. Great. The NPM GUI, uh, so this is the software that we supply, has three basic tabs. In the first one, you define your power rails, which type you have, either analog or digital point of load. Okay. You can set the thresholds for each rail, uh, select trimming for the analog rails, and then select the PM address bus uh, for the digital point of loads. Uh, you define slots and delays for power on and power off. Okay, Wendy, what are slots? I can show you that on the next one. Once you've entered your settings for the different voltage levels that you want, you can view them on the scope view. This gives you a great visual of what is going on and the basic setup. But as you get into more complex groupings, you need a more detailed view. Mm -hmm. So our MPM engineers came up with the sequencing view, which gives you a better description of the slots. Uh, you can group power rails into slots. So here we have in the example, rails one, two, and three are in the first slot. Okay. You can vary the timing delays within that slot to control the sequencing, but they're all enabled at the beginning of the slot. The second group of rails would not be enabled until all of the rails in the previous slot reach nominal. So this makes your sequencing simpler, where you don't have to track everything from time zero. Uh, you can also leave empty slots if you know you have something you may need to add later, or for system adjustments. 
This view also illustrates one of the power down modes which reverses the slots of power up um, so the same rails are grouped together but can have custom delays within the slots. The other power down modes that we support are also forward and simultaneous. Okay. Now that you have your power rails defined for sequencing and monitoring, you can define what to do when one of those flags asserts. Output signals can be a combination of any flag on any rail, so utilizing undervolt 1 and 2 and overvolt values from the previous tab. They can also be combined here with other input signals. And again, once you're all set, our NPM team has a simple graphical view to let you check your choices. Very nice. Underneath the GUI is a reference design implemented on MicroSemi's Smart Fusion customizable SOC. The design is parameterized to easily implement your exact configuration for power and then controllable through the GUI. Program the device once for your base configuration and then modify and vary settings by programming just the flash registers, which store all the settings. They can be programmed either through JTAG or through I2C. Since Smart Fusion is a flash-based device, your configuration is, of course, maintained at power down and does not require a boot prom. The GUI also has the ability to program your device directly through the JTAG or I2C. Nice. So you can test out directly in hardware and try out different implementations in a very short cycle time. Uh, the software also has meters that can show the value and variation of all the rails being measured. Okay, when we get ready to run this in hardware, Wendy, what can we use? In order to accelerate evaluation of the MPM solution, we have a DMPM daughter card, which now supports two analog channels and three digital point of loads, including trimming and PM bus support. Um, it has LEDs that are used to indicate enables and output signals, while switches can be used to introduce faults and test responsiveness. The daughter card can be used in conjunction with the Smart Fusion Evaluation Kit or Development Kit, and is shown here with the Evaluation Kit. In summary, the NPM on Smart Fusion allows you to perform reliable power supply management. While the graphical interface and evaluation board will allow you to experiment with the capabilities of the solution while waiting for your first protos to come back. Let's look a little more at the other part of this puzzle, the reacting safely under any conditions aspect. A reliable power management system needs to monitor the surrounding environment. So that includes temperature and fan RPMs, especially in rack-mounted systems. It may need to log events locally, which are stored in flash, and build up a history of the system performance. It may generate alarms either locally or remotely if a severe event is detected, and then communicate information back to a host processor for routine maintenance and tracking. Now, I know resets are always a challenge. How do we handle that? If you're managing the power supplies, you have to manage the resets of the power supply loads. Yeah. Uh, this requires a GPIO, so just an IO for each target, so you need a device with many IO. This is where leveraging an FPGA is especially important. If you have two identical devices on board, they may have different reset requirements, so reset management needs to be flexible. And it also needs to be reliable, especially firm error immune. Are there any other system requirements in high availability systems that we haven't discussed? Yes, one of the requirements for this type of system is the ability to support remote updates. And since the NPM solution is based on the Smart Fusion device, IEP or in-application programming is fully supported. This helps reduce total cost of ownership and reduce maintenance costs. By monitoring and logging data in one system that has failures, the remaining systems can be reconfigured remotely when a solution is identified. So Wendy, you mentioned something earlier about firm errors. Can you explain more about how those would affect system reliability? Yes, basically charged particles originate from a variety of sources, including cosmic rays and alpha particles from packaging contamination. These particles interact with electronics and cause either firm or soft errors. A soft error occurs when the FPGA data, or user SRAM, is hit by ionizing radiation. Using EDAC, so error detection and correction techniques, soft errors can be identified and easily fixed. However, if an error occurs in the configuration SRAM that is used to define the FPGA's personality, then this error remains until the issue is detected and the device is reconfigured. This type of error can cause functional changes in the control circuits, which is not good for your power supply controller. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, so MicroSemi's flash fabrics, so our flash-based FPGAs, are soft and firm error immune. Very good. So let's talk about security. I know security is becoming a bigger and bigger issue with all sorts of design teams today. Yeah, let's take a quick look at how security relates to the power supply management. 
we first of all want to make sure that what is programmed into the device is what was intended, which we do with an encoded bitstream that matches a pre-programmed key in the device. Only the vendor can buy devices with their key programmed, so someone at the contract manufacturer or externally cannot copy the design to make and sell copies of the original. No overbuilding or cloning, which may damage the company's reputation and undermine profits. Indeed. Also, when the system is operational, the device cannot be reprogrammed unless they have the manufacturer's key, preventing denial of service attacks. You next want to make sure your data is secure. Mm -hmm. This is where the device receives a message, authenticates the sender, encrypts it, and then sends the message maintaining the confidentiality and message integrity. Microsemi is a host of IP partners that have partnered with us uh, based on the advanced security inherent to our flash-based FPGAs. Summing all this up, what can you do with the Mixed Signal Power Manager? First of all, support a mix of analog and digital point of loads, manage up to 64 channels, support both open and closed loop margining and trimming for analog point of load, support PM bus communication for digital point of load, Define outputs for off-chip status and alarms. Leverage a simple graphical interface for design and testing. And then have an end implementation that is protected from soft and firm errors that, is, that has high levels of both design and data security. So MicroSemi delivers power supply management for high availability systems. So is this a big market or a big focus for MicroSemi? Yes, the enterprise and communications market is a big focus for MicroSemi, with special focus in power over Ethernet, timing and synchronization, voice telephony, and also in our low-power FPGAs from the SOC group. MicroSemi continues to develop products and solutions that will service our broad customer base in this segment. So do you have any examples of the solutions you have for communications? Yes, some of our current products include custom ASIC and ASSPs from CMPG, okay. analog and RF ASSPs from the AMSG group, so that's the analog and mixed signal group, mm -hmm. uh, which also includes our lighting solutions, and the customizable SOC and FPGAs from our SOC group that include functions beyond power management, such as signal processing and motor control. Okay. To close, the MPM solution takes you from a simple graphical interface to a single chip smart fusion based power management solution that manages power reliably and reacts safely under any condition. Leveraging smart fusion award winning technology, MicroSemi delivers power supply management for high availability systems. So, Wendy, tell us how we can get started. The download link below includes the software installer and a tutorial to try out the software, as well as the user's guide that describes more about the design underneath. Uh, you can also buy your own kit to try out the hardware as well, so both the NPM daughter card and the Smart Fusion Evaluation Kit. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Wendy. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, I want to remind everyone that you can click that Download Now button below your player. There you can download a zip file that has all sorts of cool stuff in it. An NPM software installation, a user guide, a tutorial, a product brief, and a white paper that discusses more about system management. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For even more Chalk Talks, check out the On Demand section of eejournal.com.